Okay, let's now go ahead and work on the record update flow. And just like in our previous videos as well, we will start with the controller first and then implement the front end related stuff. So, yeah, let's open up our student controller. And here we have the record creation related methods. So, the create and the store. So, here let's go ahead and define an edit method which will render the student's edit component. So, let's go ahead and define that. And yeah, GitHub Copilot is kind of accurate in this case because we also need to pass the classes related data because yeah, they might update the student's class data as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and just hit tab and we'll also pass the classes related data. And this is actually generated from the create page. As you can see, this is kind of same implementation with a few changes. So we need to render the edit component and we are also passing the classes data. And let's also go ahead and work on the update method while we are here. And yeah, let's populate this as well. So we will be using the root model binding and let's also define the form request. So update student request and we'll also pass the student record. And we can use the root model binding to grab that student. And okay, let's also pass the request variable and let's copy the form request name and define that using the command. So update student request and let's navigate to that. So here we will check for the user's authentication status by calling auth check and for the rules we can use the rules that we define in the create flow so the name the email the class id and section id is required and these should exist in the respective tables and while we are here i also wanted to implement the unique check so let's go ahead and do that so for the email this has to be unique and we want to check it in the students table the column is going to be email and for our update flow we also need to pass the accept id which is the id that we want to ignore while checking for this validation and we can do that by calling this student and we have that access because we are using the root model binding and this in this specific class actually refers to the request class so yeah, we are actually calling request and then student and the id and since we are using root model binding we can access that so yeah that is done let's save this and for the attributes we can use the same code so yeah i'll just pass that and let's now go ahead and finalize this so we'll import the update student request as you can see that is imported and let's just go ahead and finalize this so we'll update the student that we are receiving as a parameter and call the request validated and once that is done we will just redirect to the index page so let's save this and let's now go ahead and work on the front end stuff we haven't added the edit page yet so let's go ahead and do that so i'll just navigate to this create.view and i'll just copy this and paste it again and since uh, this is going to be almost similar to the create flow with a few changes so yeah we can update that and make a few changes so now uh, we will be getting the student's id as well as a prop in this page so we need to do that so on the edit page we need to pass the student id and again here we will be using the root model binding to grab that student and let's pass that student and to format that data we can use the student resource api resource and instead of this new convention i'll just use the make convention because i prefer this syntax and we have been doing this in our project along the way so yeah let's save this and now we have the current record that we are editing and we are sending that as a prop to this edit component we can now access that over here so along with the classes we can also receive the 
student prop which is again will be of type object and is required so let's save that and now we can populate our form with the prop that we are receiving over here and here yeah, we can use the use page so let's go ahead and do that so use page dot props dot student dot name and okay this is kind of inaccurate in this case so instead of name this is going to be email this will be class id and this will be section id so yeah that's done and we still want to watch for the class id and yeah, this implementation will be same because whenever the class id is changed we want to execute this get sections method to grab the sections related to a certain class and here instead of create student let's name this as update student and instead of post we want to make a put request to students dot update and along with that we also need to pass the student id and okay what i will do is instead of defining this use page everywhere i'll just define a new variable called student and assign that to the student prop and now we can replace all of this with a simple syntax and on here as well when we are calling the students.update we can directly call student.id and okay let's see we need to pass update student in here and let's also update the title with update student and when the user submits the form we want to call update student and everything else will work as usual so we have the validations we have the email that has been modeled accordingly with our form and since we are passing these data in here so all of the forms are going to be filled accordingly based on this name that is being grabbed from the database through root model binding so yeah this should work and let's see there might be a few things that we want to change so instead of save let's pass update and let's also go ahead and pass a root to this to our cancel button so instead of a tag let's replace that with link and the route in this case is going to be the student dot index and we want to interpret this properly so i'll pass the colon to this and yeah this should now work okay so this looks good let's now go ahead and give this a try let's see if we have any errors and we also need to hook this up in our index so let's go ahead and do that so let's open up our index dot view and let's navigate to the edit button and let's replace that with link and the route in this case is going to be students dot edit and along with that we also want to pass the student id which is this student that we are currently iterating over so yeah, let's go ahead and pass that student dot id and we also need to interpret this as a javascript value so we can pass the colon to this and okay we don't have any errors so that looks good and if we go ahead and reload okay we have some errors i think we have an import something probably so cannot read properties of undefined reading id okay we have this dot in here so let's remove that and that should be actually a comma okay let's save that and let's give this a try let's reload and let's go ahead and click on edit okay we have some errors now fail to resolve component link let's go ahead and import that on our edit so let's import that from the inertia view 3 package and okay we still don't have the data in here and the reason for this not being populated is i think we need to pass the data key since we are wrapping our student inside the student resource so yeah the data has been wrapped in the data key so yeah we need to address that as well and we can do that by calling dot data over here or in here as well so we can pass dot data or we can directly do that over here 
So let's try to do it over here. Let's see if there's any error. And if it doesn't work, then we will append it over here. Okay, that looks good. But the class ID is not working. So what's happening again? Okay, let's try to debug this on our Vue.js dev tools. And if you have any errors related to the data being not synced properly on these edit pages, then you can always go ahead and look into the Vue.js dev tool to understand what's actually happening. And yeah, let's go ahead and open up the edit component. And okay, that doesn't seem to load properly. So I'll just reload it once. That is still not working. So what's happening in here? Okay, I'll just open that up again and let's click on the edit. And if we go ahead and look into the form and try to look into the class ID, then as you can see, we have this undefined. So what's actually happening here is we are calling this class ID on our student object. But what we are actually doing on our student resource is we are passing the class as a resource again. So yeah, the class ID doesn't exist, but an object of the class exists. So yeah, we can actually reference that object by using class.id and the same goes for the section. So let's do that as well. And here we also need to grab the section related data, since as you can see, we are not passing that data over here. So we need to hook into the on-mounted lifecycle method of Vue.js to grab the initial sections that this class has. So initially uh, we have a class one selected. So we need to grab those sections from our database and populate that data accordingly in here. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So let's call the on mounted over here somewhere. So I'll just call that in here and let's pass a closure inside here and we can just call get sections and we want to get the sections based on the form dot class dot id and we have defined that already in here as you can see we only need to pass the class id and this is gonna populate the sections property accordingly based on the response and yeah that should populate the sections data accordingly so yeah let's uh, give this a try and okay, this should be class dot id instead of class id dot id so if we go ahead and reload okay that is still not working so cannot read properties of undefined reading id okay this should be actually class id because we are referencing our form so let's reload and now as you can see section a is populated accordingly and we also have other data being populated here so yeah this flow looks good let's now go ahead and finalize this and we can do that by trying to update this record and we have implemented the backend stuff already so we have the update method implemented along with the validations and the root model binding so here we are validating the record and calling student update and finally redirecting to the index page so what i will do is i'll just go ahead and update this record and this is the student id one so yeah we should see that record on the first page and i'll keep everything else as usual and if one record is updated it means that the flow is working so yeah let's go ahead and try to update it and as you can see this is the record that we just updated and yeah the flow looks good and in the next part we'll be looking at the record deletion flow so yeah i'll see you guys in the next one